All right, what's up guys? It's Raul here. I'm gonna be talking about a topic or really just a phrase in disc golf that's very common and um, you've probably heard it. A lot of people, you know, they tell you, take the highest percentage shot on the hole. What's the highest percentage throw for this shot? Take the higher percentage line. It can be kind of confusing on what that means. So I'm gonna be kind of breaking it down in this video, going over what that means exactly. And to me, there's kind of two different ways to kind of look at that. One of them is what is the highest percentage shot for the hole? And then really what's the highest percentage shot for you? So for me, for example, we got hole one here at HB. It's right there. I think it's in the short position. So it's about 180 feet. We have a forehand line on hyzer with a slow disc, a backhand line through that small gap on the right hyzer or a backhand turnover line. So those are the three most feasible shots, I would say. The forehand, hyzer is the highest percentage play. Um, hyzer is pretty much always gonna be the highest percentage play because it's always fading at the basket. So it's wide open on the left. You can throw the forehand, fade it out to the basket. Then I would say the backhand turnover is the highest percentage if you don't have a forehand. And then if you're not good at turnovers, then you can throw this backhand hyzer, but you're going through trees and those kind of play with the percentages. First, we're gonna start off with the forehand hyzer and then throw the backhand turnover and see if it, it really you know, rings true to, to what it is. So just a little standstill forehand with the, the slammer. Whoo, parked it. Now we're gonna try a little standstill backhand. As you can see, I mean, I threw it pretty good. I probably should have taken it a little bit wider because it hit a tree coming through. But as it was coming in, it hit a tree and kind of skipped down the hill there. So that just shows, you know, when taking that backhand line, you're not just fading out the basket the whole time. So it kind of lowers your percentages there. I know people take the skip shot too. So we'll try this little skip shot too. See how that is. So it worked perfectly, but I had to disc up to something more overstable to feel comfortable hitting that gap. And then I skipped to like 25 feet past the basket. All right, so there's the forehand hyzer. There's the backhand hyzer through the gap. And the backhand turnover went down the hill. Topping the birdie here. So hole one is a, a really good example of why throwing the highest percentage shot for the hole if you have it. So if you have the forehand, the backhand turnover, and the backhand hyzer line, if you have all of them, and the most open is a backhand hyzer, then that's just a good example of why that's gonna be your best option because there's nothing out on the left and it's fading towards the basket the whole time. The backhand turnover is more open, but it's a little more technical. And then the backhand hyzer actually did work, but you do have to hit a gap. So let's say for example, you're only a backhand player and for you, you feel like the backhand hyzer is the higher percentage shot, but the backhand turnover is more open. So it's more of a, the higher percentage shot for the backhand, but your higher percentage shot is the hyzer. If you feel like you're more likely to hit that backhand hyzer gap than hit that backhand turnover line, then I think that's the play. I think you go for the gap and you throw what you're most confident with if you don't have the, the pure shot for the hole. So for this hole, you guys have seen it before. It's right up on the hill to the left there. Pretty clear what the highest percentage shot here is. Um, you're gonna pretty much just wanna throw a big hyzer shot and crash it on the hill. Your other options would be throwing a mid-range shot at the hill and kind of trying to land it flat so it doesn't roll down the hill. I mean, or if you don't have a backhand shot, you could throw a forehand, but that's like very low percentage. And to have to throw that shot, you're pretty much saying that your backhand is not gonna get anywhere near the basket because to get a forehand there is really tough. We're gonna go FD3, just throw it on a hyzer and try to crash the hill. So that's pretty good. It's coming in, it might be too flat, so it might, it looks like it might be rolling, but that's decent. And if we're playing our percentages, you could say that shot has a pretty high chance of rolling down. If you have the power, it might be worth to disc up or disc down to a mid range and try to land it a little flatter on the hill so it doesn't roll. We'll try.
exactly my point. It landed flat and didn't roll. Right, so these two actually landed in a similar spot. Um, what I will say is this mid-range shot had pretty much no chance of rolling down because it landed, oh God, because it, it landed flat. See, there's the roll away potential on this hole. Whereas <laughs> this FD3 oh, had a higher percentage chance to roll down, but did get a little bit closer. So it's kind of a risk reward there. Uh, if you do have the distance on the mid range, it's not a bad play, but it's also not a bad play to play your chances with the fairway driver. All right, so hole three, where hole two was pretty obvious backhand hyzer, hole three is not very obvious what the highest percentage shot for the hole is. The basket is way back in the back. You kind of go through where this path goes and then follow it back behind all those trees back there. So, I mean, the highest percentage shot for the hole is, to me, whatever your highest percentage shot for throwing a straight shot is. Um, I'd say the best way to get to the basket is a forehand through the, the main gap on the left and then have it fade out towards the basket, but that's very technical and a lot of people don't have that sidearm shot. But if you do have that sidearm shot and you have a backhand flip up shot, I would say the sidearm shot has a better chance at getting to the basket. So um, for this, for a hole like this, where you really wanna just get out there or just hit a gap, I'd say throw your highest percentage shot if, if it could kind of go either way. So I'll show you the, the forehand hyzer line and the backhand flip up line. So it's kind of funny. I'm actually throwing the forehand line with the X-Cal and the backhand line with the MD-1. So it's very different discs, but two ways to get to the hole. So first, backhand hyzer flip line through the gap. And right now, this is actually what I'm throwing just because I just feel more confident hitting the gap with the mid-range and just trying to get it to go straight and hit that main gap. Look at that. So as you can see, I hit that main gap there, got a skip and got a roll down, putting out the basket. So like I said, if you're confident hitting that gap with the backhand, throw the backhand. If it's the forehand, throw the forehand. We'll try the forehand too. See, I didn't hit the main gap, but I was confident throwing it up at that gap, fading it out. I got a little sneaky, but I'm gonna have a putt with both discs. So here's the forehand shot. My backhand is a little bit closer actually. And the same kind of thing goes with putting. So when you're putting and you have a bunch of trees in the way, you typically wanna play the higher percentage shot. So I have a gap here, but I have a bunch of leaves. So my disc really isn't likely to get to the basket for a birdie, but it's a very good chance at a par. Whereas this line, I have a bunch of trees in the way, but no leaves. So if I get through, I have a higher chance of getting to the basket, I'd say. But we're gonna try to just punch it through this middle gap because that would be kind of my tournament play. If I was in a tournament, I'll take the biggest gap and highest chance at a par and maybe a birdie. Try to just punch it through there. Oh, barely missed it right. All right, and here's where my backhand ended up at. So just a wide open look at the basket. Just put it straight in there, come on. Oh my God, that was horrible. Oh my, I got no warm up putts today, guys. <laughs> so this hole's about 330. It bends hard to the right and is at the bottom of the hill down there. So there's two plays here. One is the higher percentage shot for the hole. And if you don't have that one, then the other is probably just, just the only other shot. So there's pretty much just two shots that you have here. Drop a comment. Let me know if you think you know which shot is the higher percentage shot for the hole overall. And what's the other shot? So to me, a left to right bending shot with the hill like this, the basket at the bottom, higher percentage shot, forehand hyzer, let it drift over, skip, maybe give yourself a putt, but for sure your disc is gonna be traveling right. The other shot for the hole, if you don't have a sidearm, for example, backhand turnover. I think this shot could potentially get you closer to the basket, but it's a lot more technical and harder to execute under pressure. So 
We're gonna try them both and see how they play out. We're gonna do the high percentage shot first, the forehand. So look at that, you throw the forehand on hyzer, it hits the hill, skips over to the right. I definitely have some sort of putt. And what this does guys, taking the higher percentage shot, is just takes away the variables. So I don't have to throw, you know, the perfect disc, hit the perfect angle, get the perfect height. I'm just putting it on hyzer and the disc is going towards the basket already. Where the backhand, I have to hit the perfect height, the perfect angle, the right speed. So it's a lot more technical and a lot harder to do in a tournament setting and under pressure. See, I threw it too high up on the hill, didn't give it enough turn. Now I'm up, up on the hill with pretty much a jump putt for par. All right, guys. So here's my disc from hole four. The basket's way up there. I'm not gonna play it. I mean, you can see, I threw the higher percentage shot with that forehand. Uh, it must have skipped right by the basket and rolled down here. Uh, it's still the higher percentage shot. You know, that, that's very unlikely to happen. I could get a bogey or I could get a par from here, but I mean, I still think that's the play, you know, going with the higher percentage shot on that right turning hole. Uh, you throw the forehand, your disc is going to the basket. This is probably worst, worst case scenario. With the backhand, you can miss the mando, you could throw up the hill. There's a lot of different things that could go wrong. I still think going with the higher percentage shot for a hole like that, where um, it's very two different types of shot is the play as the disc is traveling towards the basket. So for this hole, yeah, there's a few shots. For me, there's the backhand shot straight up through the gap. And then, so to me, there's a few different shots actually. There's a stable mid-range straight up the gap where it's gonna be fading left the whole time and kind of avoiding that tree and the little bump on the ground and really playing to like a 15 footer to the left, which you should be able to hit or throwing a mid-range shot and trying to flip it up and throw it more towards the basket but then you kind of bring more of that stuff on the right into play and have a potential possibility of kicking, you know, rolling down, going into the brush over there. So for me, I play the stable mid range up and try to play it more towards the left and give myself an open look to the left if I do hit my line. And then there's also a forehand line, but I mean, the forehand is fading towards the right in the wood line a lot. You could play the skip up, but if you release it early at all, then you're traveling away from the basket and down the hill. So that's why I'm not a big fan of the forehand line. But I will show you guys. So I'm gonna play the stable mid-range, try to fade it left. <sighs> All right, <laughs> so that MD3 is actually getting pretty straight, but that was the exact line I wanted to hit, but with, you know, a little bit more fade in the end. But I mean, it worked perfectly. It got up to the basket. I have a close putt. That's more of the flip up line I was talking about. I could have kicked to the right and maybe not have a putt, but I think it worked out. I'll show you the forehand line as well, which could be a play, but I mean, you just have to throw it perfectly flat and get it to go straight for a while and then skip up to the basket. And I just think it's not as high as a percentage because of the probability of shanking it left into the woods or right into the woods. Like that little early release and it's in the wood line over there with no putt. All right. So my forehand ended up just pretty much right in that wood line with essentially no putt. And this is what I mean by the flip up backhand that once it starts going right, there's a lot more stuff to mess with in here. But I mean, I still have a pretty clean putt, but just barely and I'm like 10 feet. So that's why I like to play something more stable kind of at this tree and fade it up to where the camera is giving myself an open look 15 feet all right so this one to me is another one that's just so obvious it seems dumb to do anything but the left fading shot so if you're throwing a backhand throw a hyzer through the gap if you're lefty I mean, you really wanna just throw a sidearm through that gap. So like, if you don't have a backhand, if you're lefty, if you don't have a sidearm, this is one of those holes that makes you think, I need to develop that shot. So that's where you wanna work on that shot because having the lefty forehand or the righty backhand is just gonna increase your percentages of getting a birdie here exponentially. If you're throwing 
a righty sidearm, righty sidearm roller, or something weird like that, your chances of getting here, a birdie here are so low, when all you have to do is throw a righty hyzer. If you hit your gap, you're pretty much putting for birdie. So we're gonna throw at that right tree on hyzer, just let it fade out towards the basket. Oh my God. That was a grip lock. See, one out of two, I hit that gap. The second one's probably parked for birdie. All right, so this is my cap wrap. I threw it a little high, so it probably just got kind of a straight up and down skip, but I mean, not throwing the shot very well. Give myself a 30 footer. Oh, just off the band, come on. All right, hole seven. So looking at this hole, we got 270-ish, 280 to the basket. We got a mando left, mando right, this tree in the middle, and pretty simple shot. So I'd say the highest percentage shot for the hole is the righty backhand, just at the right mando tree, throw a hyzer with something over stable, fade it out towards the basket the whole time. This is where those two ideas of my highest percentage shot versus the hole's highest percentage shot is a little bit different. I'm throwing a, a hyzer, a fading hyzer, is I'm less comfortable with that than throwing a flat or a flex shot. So I don't even wanna mess with that Mando on the right because my miss is grip locking it off to the right. So what I tend to do is throw a flex dot shot with an overstable disc. So I'll throw a zone on a flex line at the basket just so that way I can throw straight down the middle. Uh, if anything, miss a little bit right so I don't mess with that Mando left. But yeah, throw the flex shot and uh, I'll show that and the hyzer line. But let's say for example, you were as comfortable throwing the flex shot as the hyzer. I would say the hyzer is the better option because it's fading at the basket the whole time. Whereas the flex line, I have to throw on multiple angles. I have to get it to flex a certain amount and then fade out a certain amount. So I slipped a little bit and pulled it, but I threw it just past this little tree in the middle. But that's what I mean is I flexed it a little bit too much and it never wanted to fade out that much towards the basket. So it's kind of in the middle there. I probably have like a 35, 40 footer. Whereas my overstable Rock X3 now at that Mando tree, and it's gonna be fading left at the basket the whole time. All right, so that was way inside of what I wanted to. That's again, my head saying, don't grip lock it, but way inside, it ended up hitting that tree and getting a good kick. But I mean, it just kind of shows you that if you do trust your disc and take that wide line, it's gonna be fading out the basket the whole time and probably has you know a higher chance to get close to the basket. All right, so here's the pot I gave myself with the hyzer. I threw that poorly very inside and I still have a, a putt. Oh, and here's the flex line thrown. Just a little bit pulled, but pretty good, but ended up a little bit wide, just messing with more variables there. Uh. All right, guys, hole eight. We got a Mando right, and that's it. The basket's right there, like 280 feet. If we're playing our percentages for the hole, What's the highest percentage shot? Obviously, the forehand line fading out at the basket. If you don't have the forehand, or if you feel like your forehand is very low percentage to get that distance, or you're not good at throwing hyzer on forehand, and you just feel like your backhand percentage is higher to get to this basket on a straight shot, then maybe that's the play. But if you have any forehand at all, I would say the percentage is significantly higher to get to the basket because you're throwing in that open airspace and fading at the basket. So we're gonna throw both and show you. All right guys, so to me, even if you have a five out of 10 forehand, I would say this is probably the line unless you feel very confident with your backhand, but really what you wanna do is just take your stable disc, throw it out there to the left, and that's, that's a putt. 
And guys, the reason I say if you have a five out of 10 forehand, throw that shot is because even if you miss, even if you mess up that shot, you roll it over to the left, you fight it out early, you're out there, you know? And you're probably gonna have a putt, but if not, you're probably gonna have a relatively easy jump putt. With the backhand, if you fade it out, you could be way more left. If you grip lock it, you could grip lock it past the mando, miss the mando. Oh, I just think it's a lot more technical of a shot. If you are more significantly confident with your backhand than your forehand, then I, I would say probably go with that shot. But if you have any sort of sidearm at all, then go with that. And, and if you don't, then I would say that's something that you could really improve on because to have these hyzers going into the basket rather than flex shot is a lot better. Like I wish I had the hyzer on seven to throw rather than the flex shot. I think it's gonna get me a birdie more of the time. So I think that's something I could work on, but we'll try to throw the, the straight putter shot for this hole. So that was pretty good. I think I'm probably closer with the backhand than I am my sidearm. But if I threw that five, 10 more times, I think I'm birdying it way more with my sidearm than I am the backhand. I just think that was a good shot with my backhand. Oh, my backhand did actually get closer than my sidearm. It's under the tree. I still be, should be able to hit that putt. But I mean, I still gave myself a 20, you know, 15, 20 foot putt with my sidearm. And I'm not gonna let that one shot with the backhand emotionally affect my play because if i'm playing in a tournament and i'm evaluating a hole this hole or a hole similar to this every single time i'm gonna want to throw the sidearm but if i think about that shot i go oh oh the backhand got me close to that time let's say i throw the backhand in the tournament i throw it a little bit lower it's all the way back there if i throw the sidearm a little bit lower it's still up here if i throw it a little bit higher it's right there so that's what I mean by playing the percentages. Throwing the sidearm, that's a higher probability that I'm gonna be in the circle or close to it. Whereas the backhand, I still can get in the circle. I still can park the hole. But how many times out of 10 am I gonna do it? A lot less than the sidearm because there's a lot more different misses that I can make. Now let's hit these putts. Oh my God, dude. Putting is not it this morning. All right, hole nine, guys. We're looking at a very simple hole. Just a dead straight shot with a mando left that you should never miss and a mando right that could potentially come into play. I think the hole is about 320 feet or so. So if you have the distance to get there with the mid-range, I would say that is probably your highest percentage play, throwing it straight at the basket. Um, if you have a forehand flex shot, I think that's a good play too. All right, so we're gonna start off throwing the sidearm flex shot. So we're gonna aim it at the basket with a little bit of Annie. All right, so that was way too much flex. I pushed it way left of the basket. I honestly did think it would fade out a little bit before that, but I mean, that just shows you that was a terrible flex shot and I still have like a 60 footer, but let's go with the backhand mid range play. So it's straight. I'm gonna throw it on a little bit of hyzer so that way it pushes straight and then fades out a little bit and then so I don't mess with that mando right. In an open hole like this, I do really think uh, the highest percentage shot for the hole is your highest percentage shot. So whatever you feel most comfortable throwing from point A to point B in an open shot, forehand flex, forehand hyzer flip, backhand hyzer flip, backhand flex, your most comfortable shot throw that shot on the hole. So honestly, I would say this mid-range shot probably is um, my highest percentage shot on an open hole like this. So I'm gonna try that. See if I could just throw it on a little bit of hyzer, push it out the basket, maybe fade it out a little left so I don't mess with that mando. Oh God, it's too slippery, man. I slipped. I think I'm in line with the Mando. I don't think I've missed it. So I think I probably have like a 30 feet, 30 foot putt. I had a pretty bad slip. Kind of caused me to yank it off to the right. But it just shows you that if I would have hit my line, I would have been right in front of the basket. I haven't missed the Mando yet. So I think a mid range is a good disc choice for the hole because I'm not likely to miss the Mando even if I grip lock it, which I did. And uh, I still have a putt, so let's get it. 
Oh my God, stupid. Ugh. All right guys, thanks for watching the video. Um, I think just to sum up kind of what I learned and what I was talking about is if you have, you know, a left to right bending shot or right to left bending shot, I think it really is worth it to throw that higher percentage shot. So the forehand, if the basket's tucked off to the right or if you have the basket's way off left, you know, throw the right hand skip shot. And if you don't, then I think, you know, that's a good sign that that's something you really should work on because, you know, if you're throwing that backhand turnover, forehand flex or the forehand roller or something to get to a basket off to the left, you know, I, I think your percentages go up significantly if you do get that hyzer shot. The hyzer is the best way to get to the basket because it's always fading at the basket. So, you know, if you throw the hyzer, it's always going to be fading at the basket. So, and then if you have a wide open shot, I think the highest percentage shot for the hole is just whatever your highest percentage shot is. So, you know, if it's wide open and your backhand hyzer is, is your shot, then throw the backhand hyzer. But if you got that forehand hyzer or forehand flip up, throw that. I think you play your highest percentage shot on a wide open hole, but you know, once it gets a little bit technical, then I think you kind of read the hole and throw the best shot for the hole. So thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.